Hey everyone, uh, great to see you. I'm very excited to be speaking to you today. Uh, I'm sorry that I couldn't be there in person, but but hopefully next year. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about the Filecoin master plan. Uh, shh, don't tell anyone, it's a secret. As you know, Web3 brings trust to internet interactions. You can think of Web3 as the next stage uh, of the web. Web 1.0 was a read-only static medium. Web 2.0 brought read, write, and interactivity and dynamic applications. And now Web3 is being, bringing verifiability. And using that verifiability, we can build trustable applications. Now, Web3 needs to scale to proper web scale in order to cross the chasm and onboard all the applications that we use uh, day to day. So today, most of the applications you use are Web2 applications. And that's because right now, Web3 has, not, has focused on building the underlying transactional primitives, but hasn't built for the level of scale that Web2 requires. So we have a bunch of problems to solve in this um, scalability question to be able to reach proper web scale. Now, the mission of Filecoin is to build a decentralized, efficient, and robust foundation for humanity's information. Filecoin is a crypto-powered storage network. It is the storage network of Web3, uh, and it is growing massively. And today, what I'm going to talk about is the what we like to call the master plan, which is basically three steps. Each of these steps uh, can take many years, but each of these steps uh, enables us to build a massive scale decentralized storage network with humanity's data and with computation. So step one is to build the world's largest decentralized storage network. And we've done that. This is this took many years to, to build and, and execute and get to uh, deploy at large scale. And really happy to be able to look back and, and see that we have the largest scale uh, decentralized storage network. And it's just so big that it can actually compete with centralized cloud storage companies. So we have already 17 exabytes of capacity around the world. This is a massive scale uh, to be able to store people's data. This is distributed all over the world in many different uh, locations, primarily in areas like uh, uh, Asia, Europe, and North America. Uh, South America and Africa need to are just getting started, but we hope to see a lot uh, more growth there in the in the coming years. Uh, but already, this is the a, a massive scale network um, that can already deal with web scale traffic but it's also growing daily. So it's growing by a very large um, amount of storage every single day. Right now, the network is growing at about 13 petabytes per day, which is a, a huge amount of, um, of capacity onboarding. And uh, when you look across the different segments of storage providers, the various segments are growing over time. So storage providers are able to take uh, the returns that they make uh, over time and then uh, grow their operations and be able to serve more and more users. Now, many other programs that are other enabling new storage providers to join the network. Uh, ESPA, which is a, a storage provider accelerator program, content and materials out there, um, making it easier and easier for um, store, new storage providers all around the world to come online. Now, one really key component in uh, any storage network is to be able to make sure that the all of the data use is green. And we do that by by through a project called Falcon Green um, that enables us to measure all of the uh, energy use across the network, and then couple that to renewable energy certificates. So there's a, a, a huge effort from, um, from our community uh, to make sure that as we use energy uh, around the world, we're making sure that that's coming from renewable resources, and we're able to make sure that the uh, energy use around the world uh, devoted to, to storage um, uh, is green. And we're, we're super happy that, that Falcon is a, a massive leader here. Um, and if we can uh, push this momentum, we can get to decarbonizing crypto and through that decarbonizing the world. Now, uh, step two, which is where most of our attention is right now, uh, is on is about onboarding humanity's data and growing to massive scale uh, data onboarding pipelines. Uh, so we do that through a, a couple of uh, big components. One is a series of on ramps, and these are specific applications or programs uh, that enable large scale uh, data onboarding, and through a program called Falcon Plus. So uh, all of these uh, together are resulting in this massive scale uh, data onboarding across the network. So already, uh, in the, we started the year with around 20 petabytes of data use, and we're now all the way up to 185, which is a massive scale um, growth in just a you know, few short uh, nine months. And uh, we're, we're now, the, the probably the most exciting graph to, to look at uh, across the entire network is that bottom uh, bottom left graph that shows the growth in usage over time. So we're now onboarding on the scale of one to two petabytes of user data into the network. And this makes it the largest decentralized storage network by far. This is um, orders of magnitude larger than, than the next um, 
decentralized storage network and is already getting to be competitive with centralized cloud storage providers. So this is um, Web3 scaling to meet um, Web2 needs. And so this is this is uh, super, super exciting. Now, uh, what are people using it for? So all kinds of things, everything from, you know, think of Web3 um, application objects where, you know, think systems like Web3 storage um, is enabling tens of thousands of users uh, to store um, millions of objects, like I think on the order of like 50 million objects um, stored in this particular on-ramp. And then on-ramps like NFT storage enables um, you know, around 60,000 users to store 90 million NFTs. And so this is all of the um, all of the assets and static assets associated with NFTs. So this is images and video um, and metadata files and so on. Then there's uh, systems like personal storage applications. So think of um, traditional uh, consumer-oriented um, data storage drives. So think of um, systems like um, Dropbox and similar, where, where you're able to store your personal files or your company's files. Um, there's several applications already um, building and growing in, in that area. Um, fleet, fleet storage, chain save files, um, slate numbers, and, and so on. There's already uh, also a number of applications uh, onboarding different media use cases. So this is video or music or other media applications. Uh, one of the ones uh, I'm most excited about is Huddle, where um, enables proper peer-to-peer -peer decentralized video um, video conferencing platform uh, where you can uh, record your meetings and store them uh, and serve them through Filecoin, which is a super exciting um, exciting thing for the network. And we also have many different games and applications starting to develop on top of Filecoin, uh, including metaverse um, uh, systems where the entire rooms and environments are um, whole 3D uh, worlds are being um, built and minted as as NFTs um, on on Filecoin, and you can link um, link across these and distribute them uh, to to users and so on. So these these kinds of applications and use cases are super super exciting to watch. Um, we we expect to see a lot of building around games and metaverses in the in the next two years. And so we anticipate that there's going to be lots of different um, Web3 applications that come online on, on Filecoin, um, enabling people to have many kinds of interactions in these environments. Uh, we also have major scale Web2 data sets coming online. So this is, uh, think of large scale um, data science users uh, who want to be able to archive large scale data and then be able to run um, computing pipelines on top of that. Uh, so for example, there's major universities like, like Berkeley um, onboarding massive scale, uh, you know, multi-petabyte uh, data sets into Filecoin. Uh, so this is one particular experiment that's super exciting, where a um, a uh, a neutrino experiment is th that is producing vast quantities of data um, is going to be onboarding all their all their data into uh, into Filecoin as the experiments um, sort of as as the data comes out of the experiments, um, pipe it all the way into into Filecoin for long-term archival. Um, and then data science use. So this is a super, super exciting set of use cases, and, and we can't wait to, to grow more um, with many other, other universities like these. We're also seeing a number of cities and um, uh, public civic data sets come online. So this is, um, you know, imagine the use cases where there's a, a city or a government that has important uh, community-oriented data and data sets that need long-term archival, that need um, better governance structures, and so on. Uh, Falcon is a perfect uh, network for that kind of use case, and we're already seeing this uh, in use through um, uh, through very di various different programs. Um, th this one in particular is the New York City putting large scale open data sets um, on Falcon, and there's many other cities that are following suit. Uh, a lot of this growth is enabled by uh, Falcon Curve Economics and programs like Falcon Plus that enable um, enable a decentralized storage network to compete with the cloud uh, storage prices of, of massive scale giants like. Uh, Amazon and the other centralized cloud providers. Uh, so this is kind of the the amazing superpower um, that decentralized networks can have. Like this, this crypto economic construction um, that enable, enables that kind of growth, and it's also powering um, new kinds of uh, business models and new kinds of economic structures. Um, one super exciting one is the ability to have um, auctions for data sets, auctioning to um, try and get the best possible um, storage price to store your data. Um, and in some cases, be able, being able to have negatively priced storage, which is a super exciting um, uh, uh, condition where wh while the Falcon network has more capacity than, than data use, um, it's actually uh, really advantageous for storage providers to store your data, uh, therefore um, uh, 
data set owners can bring the data to the network and then get rewarded, get a share of, of the rewards for bringing that, that super valuable data. So it's a super amazing economic condition that is enabled by crypto economics um, and by, by the conditions of the platform network. So uh, this is super exciting. Um, we think that this kind of structure is what's going to enable um, a whole new range of DAOs to come online. Uh, we're calling these data DAOs. Um, think of uh, being able to couple a, an important data commons, uh, a digital data commons, but now with the governance tooling and systems to be able to um, use on-chain primitives to govern the, the how the data gets uh, used, how it gets transformed, how it, it how it is shared amongst users and so on, and eventually monetized. So we think of um, these data DAO systems are going to be able to um, collect a lot of really valuable data curated over time uh, and then enable the, it to be uh, transacted and, and, and uh, monetized and so on um, through on-chain DAO primitives. And so we, we sort of anticipate that this kind of thing will start growing um, in 2023 and 2024. Uh, one super exciting area is, is now, now that we have the large-scale uh, storage network, being able to provide super fast uh, retrieval on the network. And so we want to get to CDN level quality with sub-second retrieval. Um, uh, the alpha um, uh, version of, of virtual markets is is starting to come online now. Uh, there are several um, alpha programs that you can you can participate in. Uh, so stay tuned for these for these things. Uh, I hope to uh, be here next year and be able to like point to large volumes of data moving um, at sub-second delivery. Like that would be an, an amazing result to get Falcon to be to have uh, CDN delivery. Uh, one other super exciting thing is the growth of the startup builder ecosystem around Falcoin. Uh, so there's a, a ton of support for builders uh, of new systems and new applications, everything from de developer resources to hackathons to uh, early stage grants and then accelerators and ecosystem investors. This creates a, a this makes Falcon an amazing opportunity environment for anybody that wants to get started in Web3 that wants to uh, build a new project or build a new application. There's a lot of support structures for people to get started. So um, if you're a builder thinking about uh, jumping into Web3, uh, come join our community. And just as an example, the we're, we're now at the scale of having many hundreds uh, or over 100, 400 organizations building on the network um, and at the scale of like 2,000 projects and counting. Uh, so it's super, super exciting uh, level of growth year over year. Uh, and so that brings us to step three, uh, and that's kind of the the uh, horizons, uh, what's coming uh, next for, for development and so on. And that's to bring computation to the data. This is so that we can enable large scale uh, web scale applications. Uh, and there's a large scale um, core improvements roadmap uh, that you can find, and uh, this is uh, shared in a bunch of different different places, but one huge track here is the, the FBM programmability and computation track. Um, the first part of bringing computation to the data is to uh, enable smart contracts, uh, user smart contracts and programmability on Filecoin. And this is happening with the FEM. We already passed the first upgrade that enables um, the, the recomposed um, uh, FEMs, uh, the recomposed Filecoin's VM uh, system on top of the FEM, um, and that launched already. And the next milestone is to bring user programmability into, um, into the network, uh, and that's going to happen in, in Q1. Now, in between now and Q1, there's going to be a series of test nets to, that enable lots of teams to get started and start building. Uh, there's already uh, 25 uh, teams of tool builders that are all building in the, on the first of those. Um, there's future cohorts coming. So if you're excited, if you want to uh, try out all of the uh, FEM uh, tooling early, uh, definitely reach out and join those programs. Uh, one super exciting thing that, that is getting built out is uh, compatibility with, with EVM. So you can take your EVM contracts and deploy them directly in Filecoin um, as they are without having to change, um, change ideally without having to change anything, um, and at most uh, maybe deployment pathways and, and so on. Uh, then after that, once we have the FEM and we have uh, user smart contracts, we can bring large scale computational pipelines to the data. This is um, this is finally what's going to enable us to have um, massive Web two scale applications being able to, to do the kinds of computations that Web2 systems do in their backends. Think of like the massive scale data uh, processing pipelines of a platform like um, Twitter or Twitch or YouTube or TikTok or, or WeChat or, or systems like that um, that have to deal with tons of processing of data underneath, uh, in, in the data center. Uh, that's what's uh, blocking Web3 from, from scaling. Uh, and we think that this is gonna come through computation networks. And so we're building Filecoin uh, to be a phenomenal L1 for these kinds of computational networks. Uh, we anticipate that there's going to be many different computational networks because there are very difficult trade-offs between um, 
verifiability, performance, and privacy. Like if you want to have very high performance systems, then you have to trade off verifiability and privacy against that. If you want to have um, strong verifiability, you can do things like zero knowledge proofs, um, but that that trades off uh, against performance. And those don't necessarily give you privacy of the of all the data that you want to compute. Um, if you want to do that, then you have to start doing things like uh, uh, fully homomorphic encryption and other, other kinds of primitives. So we think this very difficult um, uh, trade-off space of, of technologies is going to yield many different computational networks that tune for different use cases and tune for different primitives. And we're building Falcon to be the best L1 for all of these computational networks. So um, if you're excited to either you build applications using this tooling or you're, you're potentially going to build one of these compute networks, um, uh, come do it in, in our ecosystem. Um, one other very important piece here is that Falcon is meant to be building bridges to all of the other um, uh, blockchains in, in the space. Uh, Falcon is inherently highly collaborative. It is the only uh, storage network that can scale to exabytes level of capacity and, and data use. Um, and so we want to be the main storage place where uh, all of the other um, blockchains store and compute on, on the data that they're, that they're gathering. Now, it, one of the things that I'm most excited about in the long term is to be able to um, have large scale scalability of consensus. Uh, so most of the next generation um, blockchains are hitting um, on the range of hundreds of, the, of transactions per second. There are finally some groups starting to think about millions. Um, I think we need to go dramatically higher. I think we need to get to billions and trillions of transactions per second. And so that's what we're shooting for. We're building um, an architecture around um, consensus scalability that will scale to that um, uh, level of, of, of possibility. And that can be able to deal with partition uh, partitions in the internet. So there are all kinds of circumstances by which you end up with uh, partitioned regions of the internet that needs to be um, capable of dealing with um, uh, applications and enable applications to work through those kinds of uh, uh, breaks. Um, and so that's uh, a super exciting area of research and and development that we're going to be um, you know super excited to to present on in in the in the coming year. Now, all of this put together is going to enable this massive scale data science platform where you can do, uh, think of large scale um, uh, uh, pipelines like all kinds of analysis and machine learning and so on um, directly on top of the data that you're storing on Falcoin. And then from there, you can get to um, proper web scale applications. So think of all of your favorite applications and think of the vast quantities of data that, that they generate and the vast quantities of computation that needs to happen on top of that data. Um, that's what we're building Falcon for. Uh, it's been a been a long road, but it's super exciting that we you know have achieved step one. We're now working on step two and step three. Uh, step two is already uh, showing an amazing uh, scale up uh, through this year, going from twenty petabytes to now um, uh, close to uh, close to two hundred, uh, which is super exciting. And now the the layer of computational primitives like FVM, compute over data, and uh, consensus scalability to properly enable web scale applications. So you heard it here. This is the Falcon master plan. Um, and that's what's going to enable us to properly cross the chasm and make Web3 capable of, um, of taking on uh, Web2 applications. Uh, one final plug to uh, join our community and, and come hang out with us. Uh, there's been already three major um, Falcon events around the world. There was Phil Austin, Phil Toronto, and Phil Seoul. Um, the next one is Phil Singapore, and that's going to happen next week. And then after that, Phil Lisbon. Uh, Phil Singapore is already it's a huge event. There's, uh, I think, on the order of um, 20 different uh, side events, and there's, I think, like 2,000 people coming already, which is like super amazing. So um, uh, come come join us over there. Tons of different ecosystem partners and speak and exciting speakers uh, will be there. One of the side events around Phil Singapore is Phil.vc. It's a demo day to enable you to meet some of the best startups in Web3. After that, we have Phil Lisbon from October 30th to November 4th, uh, which is going to be a huge event in Lisbon uh, to round out the year. Uh, now, who knows? Maybe there will be more uh, Falcon-oriented events um, around the world. Uh, so that's it. Uh, that's it for me. Uh, great to see you. Uh, enjoy the rest of the conference and see you next year. Bye.